You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. And some of you may on Twitter the Gaming Dragon today. I'm coming back at you. Now let's play episode of Echo Flynn's Path. So y'all, yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's-a go. You're right there. There we go. Looking around, I slowly open my door. Carl? Flynn awakens with a start, looking around some. He out yet? Nothing. Carl! I yell it, but he still doesn't come out. Feeling some dread build up in my stomach, I get out of the car and slowly walk around the side of the building. Flynn joins me. The hell's going on? It's an alley between the print shop and what I think is a laundromat. Nothing is in the alley except for a few dumpsters and clumps of garbage. I step carefully around puddles covered in oil slick and wonder if maybe he just really wanted to smoke. Carl? Something shifts on the other side of one of the dumpsters and I hear sniffling. Wordlessly, I walk around the dumpster to the other side. Carl is bent over, his back to me, paws on his knees. His whole body is shaking and his breaths are ragged. Holy shit, Carl! Before I can do anything, Flynn's at his side. You okay, man? What happened? The stench of vomit hits my nose and I don't need to look closely to know what the puddle between Carl's hooves is. Carl makes sure to turn his face away from us, not saying a word. Shit! I dash back to the car and open the passenger door so I can get to the glove box. I pull out a few napkins before hurrying back to the ram. When I return, Flynn is quietly rubbing his back. He takes them from me wordlessly and starts wiping his face. The last time I'd seen Carl like this was just the la was just last year, when he'd had his panic attack at school. I didn't think he'd have that problem now, after all the therapy and time, and time away. I feel just kind of useless just standing there watching them. He's at least not hyperventilating. The ram has his horns pressed up against the wall, taking deep breaths as he wipes his face again. Why do I suck at everything? He says it quietly, between gasps, but I can make it out. Eh, not everything. Come on, let's go. He starts to pull on his arm, but he yanks it from him violently. Don't touch me! Flynn and I are stunned into silence. I just stare at him, mouth open. He glances at me, and his eyes are red, and for once, it's not because of weed. Carl starts off toward the car, toward the car on his own, spitting off to the side as he does. Carl! Carl, what happened? He whirls on me. I fucked up, obviously. Any more fucking questions? A few, yeah. His voice breaks apart in the last sentence, and he turns away from us as his face starts to screw up. My stomach feels hollow as I watch Carl get into the car. I've never, ever seen him like this. He immediately hunches forward behind the driver's seat, head in his paws. I slowly walk up to the driver's side door, feeling like shit myself. Flynn joins me. The gila, tug the gila tugs at the scales around his chin, teeth grit. His expression is just bizarre, like an intermittent smiling in between almost nauseous-looking face contortions. Fuck! We sit for a while, waiting to see if Carl is going to say anything. He does. I'm sorry! He blurts it out through his fingers. I look over at him, scared to say anything in case I say the wrong thing. I just... it was a disaster, dudes! He takes in a deep, shuddering breath. Uh, he couldn't tell I... Uh, he could tell I wasn't into it right away. I was awkward as fuck! He leans back and tugs at his shirt. This shit, this isn't me, and they knew it, and it got me nervous. I've been nervous ever since I put on these clothes, since I got this stupid trim. We sit in silence for a long, long time until Carl finally looks at me and smiles. God damn it, we all knew this was going to happen, right? It's like a Pueblo with you, Chase, and with your uncle, Flynn. I'm just a fuck up. Nah, nah, this is my fault, man. I told you I was going to coach you, and I never got around to it. And... And I'm the tit, and the tit dirt who made Dax stay behind. Maybe you could have helped. I don't fucking know. The Gila takes in a seething breath. You can't be expected to go into this shit blind and spit out exactly what some mid-level manager named Skyle wants to hear. The world's fucked like that, just banging walls sometimes. Thinking y'all, water time. Hmm. I don't know how I like my fizzy water. No, dude, I'm the one that screwed up the interview. Carl settles back in his seat. Now that, now with that fuck up out of the way, I sigh, looking out at the hazy horizon in the direction of, of where I know Echo is. On to the next. None of this fucking matters, Carl. Don't worry. Flynn gives me a look, then closes his eyes. I don't know if Flynn believes what he's saying. So with that, I turn on the ignition and pull out of the parking lot, leaving the print shop in its alley far, far behind us. 
quiet outside. It's quiet inside. Not that I expected any noise or anything, but still. Flynn's desk is pretty clean except for a stack of documents labeled March 1st County Code Amendment Board Review. Upon closer inspection, there also appears to be a book propped up against the monitor. Municipal Economic Development, Free Market Solutions for Public Problems. A sticky note is attached. A sticky note is attached to the front with flowery cursive handwriting that states, Read this. I hear Flynn step up beside me, seeming to notice my gawking. He doesn't say anything, though. Instead, he just walks over to his computer chair and takes a seat. Carl ambles in, ambles in after him. If I didn't know better, I think he was high, judging from how puffy and red his eyes are. You don't actually, you don't actually come inside here too often, do you, Carl? Carl shakes his head. Still really weird that you're a secretary, Carl half mumbles. Clerk. Flynn rests his elbows on the desk, rubbing his fingers together. You know, elections are coming up here soon. There are a few positions up for grabs. He looks at Carl, and it takes me a few, it takes a few seconds for Carl to look back and get the meaning. That's cool, I guess. Flynn opens his mouth, pauses, and speaks. Maybe even the clerk position. I was heading toward the mailroom, but that catches my attention. I stop. What? Do you think you'll be, like, voted out? Flynn shrugs. I might not run. Carl lets out a little huffy noise, sniffing and wiping his nose with the inside of his shirt. So, you're gonna go back to unloading freight? Flynn doesn't respond immediately, as if weighing something in his mind. He pushes the power button on his desktop tower, and the whir of the internal fan breaks the silence. Hmm. I may not even be here. Carl looks up now. Huh? Gila seems to grimace slightly. His ma pulled into a sneer as if whinging at himself. Fucking... Chase, you gonna get your shit scanned or not? I straighten some, not really having expected him to shift focus and snap at me. Right. What the hell? What does he mean by that? Flynn, what? He's staring at me, and it's like all the air has been sucked out of the room. I swallow. Are you going somewhere? Flynn looks to Carl as if expectant. Carl blinks, meeting Flynn's gaze. Are you, are you, dude? Flynn's sharp stare lulls, but only slightly. I don't know yet. What the fuck? Carl, it really doesn't... Shit. Do you see the way Chase is acting? Carl looks at me a moment, then back to Flynn. Uh, no? His voice is quiet. You're gonna leave, too? I don't want to leave, Carl. Flynn shifts in his seat, his tail curled tight around the base post of his chair. Carl just seems still. I can't even see him breathing. Jesus fuck, Chase. All I did was ask. Flynn reaches into his desk drawer and pulls out a can of lemon-lime soda, holding it up to Carl's dir- holding up in Carl's direction. You did something, all right. Just give me a minute, all right? I need to talk to Lardass. Do your shit. <clears throat> ah. I rub the space between my brow and step out of the room. The mail room looks a little different for some reason. It's not nearly as neat as it was, with some of the some of the parcel folders scattered on the main table, documents dog-eared and tape-tagged. I step forward and the heel of my foot hits something hard and metal. It rolls out from beneath me and I have to use my tail to catch my balance. Jesus, fuck! I find myself involuntarily clutching my chest, trying to regain my composure as a check what I nearly broke my neck on. A fireplace poker? Wait now. Water time. <clears throat> well, actually, pokers. There's like five of them just sitting here on the floor. Thank God I didn't step on the pointed end. What are these even doing here? I step around the pile when I hear the sound of Flynn's raspy voice from the other room. So you didn't see anything? Carl speaks next, but his tone is too low and rumbly to make anything out. I remember the other day that I, while I was working on the computer in the corner, I could hear most of what was being said in the main office. The walls here are thin. I move to the corner of the room and press my ear against the wall. At first I don't hear anything, but then Carl coughs and it sounds like he's right next to me. Dude, I, I don't know what you're going off about. Don't bullshit me. Flynn snaps back. Silence follows. I hear what sounds like metal scraping against the wall. The plaster drywall creaks ever so slightly in reaction to Carl's shifting weight. I don't know. Flynn sighs. But, but why didn't you tell me who you tell me who you were going? I might not. Nothing set in stone. <clears throat> it's not my decision anyway. But what do you mean it's not your decision? Dude, you're like an adult with money. I hear the sound of typing on an old mechanical keyboard. The intermittent pecking evident that it's Flynn. It's my aunt. She wants to bring me up north for a while. Oh! Carl coughs again. Is this for, you know, that FLSD, FLDS stuff? You know, I... Shit, I actually don't fucking know. The office chair creaks. Flynn must be leaning back or standing up. She gets all obsessed with shit. 
Like, she's religious and all that, but she couldn't give two fucks that I like dick. She only believes what she wants to believe in. A lot of it's shit that's made up. Even more made up, I mean. There's a pause. Not to go full fedora on you. What I'm trying to say is, she's been pushing me to leave because she feels like we should. And you're okay with that? She's been saying everything's gonna go tits, gonna go to tits soon. The air's wrong. Something's in the rocks. She's right. She's always right. What? Silence. Not even a shuffling of hooves or the squeak of a chair. I hold my breath, trying to hear something, anything. All I can hear is a slight ringing in my ears and the thud of my own heartbeat. It feels like multiple minutes pass and nothing happens. Fuck, do they know I'm listening? I quickly step back away from the wall and shuffle back to the center table with all the folders. My eyes dart at the door of the doorway, half expecting Flynn to be standing with his blue-green eyes piercing right at me. But there's nothing. I'll have to ask Carl about all this when he's feeling better. For now, I should probably at least try to focus on the task at hand. Looks like some of the folders I went through are still on the desk. I thought I'd put those away. Maybe the mayor was checking to make sure I didn't take anything or was just curious what I was looking at. Well, it doesn't matter now. It actually cuts down some work of, some work of trying to find most of this stuff. I plug in my keychain thumb drive to the printer and begin scanning. I can't help but think about Carl in the print shop while I'm at it. He's basically been on a giant summer vacation for the past two years with no real worries about money or anything. To go from that to having to wake up every morning at 6 at 6 a.m., then driving all the way to Peyton and do this for eight hours. I mean, it's easy, I think. Once you get the basic handle of things, it's the kind of job you can kind of autopilot. You can drift away and just daydream most of the day. I had jobs like that growing up. Hell, if I went to Mesa instead of Pueblo, I'd probably have ended up, ba up behind the till at Leo's dad's place. Despite everything, I can't help but feel that might have actually been kind of fun. Leo's dad's really nice. Always offering to help with things and never seeming too skeeved regarding gay stuff. But, of course, I had to get away from this town. And Peyton's not far enough. I'm still not even sure I like journalism. <clears throat> I mean, the classes are interesting and all, but I'm, I'm imagining trying to sell myself and my work to all these outlets and... I don't know. I guess I don't really have the energy for it. Plus, I never really liked looking at myself on screen. Huh. I don't really remember seeing this one before. This must be from a folder I didn't look at. There's no descriptive text attached to it. I place the photo on the scanner. After a few minutes, I think I've got most of what I need. I remove my thumb drive and turn the power off for the scanner. As I step out into the hall, I notice that the door to the mayor's office is open. It's still pretty quiet in here. You know, I never really knew much about Flynn's aunt. She was kind of in and out of his life growing up, from what I recall, and usually didn't stick around for Echo for too long. Second, y'all. Water time. Her and Flynn's uncle had a weird relationship, and it wasn't like I ever hung out at Flynn's place enough to learn more. He was always just a bit too old to really pal around with, with like I did with the rest of the group. I mean, Leo was like a year younger, but he didn't really act like it. Flynn was basically an adult by the time he was 14, by the way he handled himself, all self-reliant and such. Curious, I step into the office and am taken aback with how much it smells like, pot like potpourri. My nose takes me to the source in a small bowl filled with slightly decayed plant life of a wide variety of colors. It gives the office a sort of flower garden scent which doesn't really match the aesthetic. Black, white, and red everywhere. Like a supervillain who could only buy hobby shop decorations. <clears throat> I step over a small pile of alabaster quartz which sits in a ceramic dish on the floor. Which is strange, of course. There's a weird looking globe on the edge of her desk, too. I step closer and notice several little prongs which hover over what I think is the meridian. Actually, there's no landmass indications or any labeling on the sphere to speak of. I reach out and touch the smooth plastic surface. Pressing down, I give the globe a gentle spin. As it rotates, the metal prong begins to bounce like a, like a dowsing rod before sticking to the surface. As the sphere continues to spin, the sticky effect lessens and it bounces back. Huh, must be a magnet on the other side. <clears throat> Alright, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye!